store is launching today. Stay tuned and I will tell you about everything. Happy Wednesday everybody. How are we all doing? Welcome to Miles Dyer Live where every Wednesday we hang out to talk about all sorts from the fun to the serious. Sometimes quizzes, pop culture, movies, games, all that sort of fun stuff. Almost did a quiz today. I was uh, in the process of setting up Jackbox uh, Party Pack. Um, There's a couple of games I wanted to play, but because I was doing a Let's Play downstairs with my PS5, I didn't want to then have to rush to get it upstairs for today. And then also, my mind was just kind of in the headspace of reflecting on a serious issue, you know, that being COVID. Um, and I know it's a, a pretty serious one. And some of you are probably like, why are we even doing an episode on this? But I hope you will stick with me because I am genuinely curious to hear everyone's thoughts. Just kind of checking in. How's everyone doing these days? Because it might be very well that you're all like, yeah, 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 no, I'm fine. Like everything's just back to normal. And then others might be, you know what? I still kind of struggle with X, Y, and Z. Might be in terms of how you connect with people. You might still be feeling the effects of like being stuck in with lockdown. Your job prospects may have changed or the way that you work 
or you might even know someone who is dealing with long-term effects or perhaps you're dealing with them with yourself so I kind of just felt like far too often in life we tend to ignore things that can be quite traumatic and problematic um, and so I thought this would be a great opportunity to sort of check in talk about how everyone's doing and share experiences and things like that so I thought we would do that today quizzes We'll go on hold for another week, though, um, and it will be good fun when we do it. But for today, yeah, we are going into the serious. And to be fair, there's a lot of serious stuff going on in the world at the moment. I have felt at complete despair at the state of the world. Um, anyone that follows me on social media will know I tweeted quite a lot about it yesterday. Um, but <laughs> I'm not going to talk about it now. So, um, look, I just want to welcome everyone. Uh, hello to everyone that is in the chat. How are we all doing? Who have we got here? Oi, Shapeshifter, the Amorphous Game Cat. Oi to you too. Mojo, good to see you. Um, JPEG Q, good to see you. Who says, still working remotely from home since COVID. Mostly positive, that's good. Uh, Karina says, I've become a full-time hermit. Love it. Expect when I don't, except when I don't. Um, so yeah, lots of conversations here that we're going to be having today. Uh, Siago, good to see you here. How are you all doing? Kira Cat Lady. Um, and yeah, happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday to all of you as well. Clem Fandango, uh, this music is a banger. For anyone that likes the music that is at the start of these episodes, you can head on over to Spotify. Just search Miles Die Live or use that QR code in the corner uh, or just search my name. There is a playlist that has all the music I play at the start of this show. And whenever I add new music uh, to the show uh, at the start, because uh, I'm always going through Monster Cat's back catalogue, I will add it to that playlist. I listen to this playlist a lot. Just saying. Just saying. Also today, I'm going to be talking about my merch store. It's finally live. It's live right now. So we're going to talk about it in just a moment. And for those of you that are watching on the show right now, and if you're watching on replay, if you're watching on replay, possibly. If you're watching right now, most definitely. You're going to have access to a discount code with the store that's going to give you 10% off. Um, I think that it allows up to 20 people to use the discounts um, and it's 10% across all orders. Um, so hopefully that is something that is nice for people. Um, I had to give my car details over just in case there's any purchases that are made that actually cost me money, but I don't think they do. Um, but, you know, um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to going through all that today. Uh, but obviously before all that, always we have a puzzle in the background and this looks like a horrible puzzle. Look at that. Ugh. Um, if you go to this link, bit.ly uh, forward slash MDL139 puzzle, this is a puzzle that I allow you people to get on with in the background every week where you just click a block, click another, and it swaps them around. And if it flashes green, it's in the right place. If it flashes red, it means it was in the right place and no more. And if it doesn't flash at all, it just means you're still working out. But the edges, the borders I do. Oh, look, that was green. Wow. What were the chances of that? Um... Just keep putting it along. Here we go. Let's have a look. I mean, that's lighter, so I'm assuming actually it should be this side. I don't know. I'll let you get on with it. But look, we've got these, we've got these corner pieces and things like that. I'll let you get on with it. This is the problem when I start describing this, as I want to actually get involved with this. But it's for you to complete, not for me. So, uh, yeah, have a go with that. Uh, and good luck. Um, and uh, hello to everyone who has just been joining. Hello, hello, hello. How are we all doing? Oh, we got um, Awesome Tatum. Awesome Tatum here. Good to see you. We've got... I love Kira Cat Lady's new uh, icon. Very cool. We've got Finn. Uh, is there an update on PSVR 2 being usable for PC yet? No update, I don't think. We've got Prophecy777. Good to see you here. Uh, and <laughs> Karina says, merch hype. Um I have been meaning to take photos of the merch, me wearing it, and I haven't had a chance this week for reasons that I'll get into in a moment. Brandon VR, good to see you here. Hope all is well, buddy. Um, cool. Right. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? We're going to first of all do vitamin G. Every week we always talk about things that we're grateful for. Just taking a moment. Just taking a moment to think about what you're grateful for. Oh, look, here we go. We've got the vitamin G uh, buttons. These are the big ones. Uh, on the store, you are going to be able to buy the smaller ones, which I would recommend. I think these are a bit too obnoxiously big. But choice is important. Um, but yeah, vitamin G. It's just good to think about what you're grateful for. And you don't have to share it in the chat. But obviously, this time every week, I invite you to share what or who 
or where you're grateful for, if that can even be a question. It's just good to reflect because it makes you appreciate life more. It makes you more in touch with the moment. And for me, my gratitude goes to my parents who have been absolutely incredible. I had just flown back last week from Boston. I was very jet lagged and I was living with my parents for a couple of days before moving back in to my house. I have now moved back in here fully and I have a new kitchen, which my dad was the project leader on. Um, him and my mother and my father's friend, Nick, have been incredible. They've done an amazing job on refurbishing my home, basically. They've knocked the wall down into my living room, which means I get sunlight on both halves of the day now. I actually have somewhere that I can eat my food other than my desk because normally I would wake up in the morning, I'd have my breakfast here if I have breakfast, I would work here, have my lunch here, I would work here, have my dinner here and then I would work on all my other projects. I would spend most of my life in this room. I now have a living room that I spend a bit more time in and I have a kitchen and it's really revolutionised my mental health. I feel incredibly, incredibly lucky uh, to have supportive parents uh, and so big love as Mojo says here to Mr and Mrs Dyer big love to them they are right now do you know what they are currently on vacation in Japan which is on my bucket list and uh, they sent me a photo of my dad um, let me find this <laughs> my mum just sent me this on uh, on the 31st what so a few days ago and the caption was yesterday so um, let me just send this to my computer and I'll put it on screen. This is just awesome. I love this so much. Right, has it sent? Has it sent? Has it sent? Here it is. Um, there we go. It's my dad. <laughs> I'm assuming they're in Japan. They're, 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 yeah, they're, they're in Japan. Um, my dad's enjoying an ice cream. <laughs> oh, no. I just knocked it off camera. Let me, uh, let me uh, put it back up. Look at this. Awesome. And I love the Power Rangers. I love the Power Rangers so much. By the way, I'm joking. I know it's not the Power Rangers. I'm just doing it to wind you up. It's Gundam, right? Gundam Wing? Or am I... Am I, am I should I have not made that joke? Have I? Am I wrong as well? Um, but yeah. Uh, my dad and my mum in Japan. It's on my bucket list. Would love to do it. Uh, hey, Ben. Good to see you here, dude. I love your... 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 your Arizona Fruit Punch, um, Avatar. Japan is amazing. Oh, I'd love to. I'd love to go so much. Um, hey, Berber Cat, good to see you here. Hello, hello, hello. How are we all doing? How are we all doing? Um, Shapeshifter says, Vitamin G, living in times of peace and democracy. And I know, I know you're not saying this, but it's good, a good reminder, especially because there is so much turmoil around the world. Um, it is kind of amazing, like, as you get older, you realise things like World War Two, etc. weren't that long ago. As you get older and you get a sense of, you know, what a decade is, what 20 years are, what 30 years are, it all makes things feel pretty close to home. So, yeah, um, democracy and freedom is always in the balance and I think it's a really good thing to be mindful of. Kira says... Uh, I'm grateful for the friendships that survived months of silence and all the people I've met in the last two weeks. Connection. Connection. Super, super, super important. Um, let's have a look here. Just having a look. I don't want to miss any vitamin Gs. Um, any other vitamin Gs? Any other vitamin Gs? Um, <laughs> wow, your dad is very tall and metallic. Um, love it. Clem Fandango, brilliant, 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 brilliant. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think the huge mech is a bit of a giveaway that it's Japan. Yeah, it's definitely in Japan. Uh, do we get a kitchen video tour? So I currently don't have blinds. I've got cardboard on the window. But I have got a before and after video that I'm planning. I've obviously filmed the before once the floor is down and the blinds. Um, but yeah, I'll definitely give a tour. I'll definitely give a tour of it. It looks awesome now with my um, living room space and where I do my VR stuff. So that's really, really good. 
Um, dude, there is ice cream everywhere in Japan and the flavors are amazing. I ate so much of it and still lost weight because of the walking. That's awesome. Oh, all these people making me jealous. Japan was my first trip outside of Europe. Very fond memories. So your dad is a robot? Yeah, I love it. With that horn, I'd guess Gundam Unicorn. There we go. Um, ben says with his avatar, I need to change it as opposed to explain it. Explain it. Um, wow, Ben says, I'm going to Estonia tomorrow. They became independent 33 years ago, which is scary to think about. Yeah, things are so recent. Uh, Siago Guitarist says, Vitamin G, one of my managers got some tough news at work. She sat with me for an hour as I couldn't collect myself, tempted by nearest off-license. Her kindness 100% saved me from a drink relapse. Well, that is very, very good. Karina says, I must be very ungrateful this week. I can't think of anything. Well, when you're put on the spot, but I bet I'm sure when you, your head hits the pillow tonight, you'll be able to think of at least something that you're grateful for. Even if it was a meal that you had or somewhere that you went. Um, but yeah. That's a mate. Uh, much love to you, Siago. Um, I just read your other message as well. Um, I actually saw a really interesting story in the news actually this week about um, Steve O uh, from Jackass. Uh, let me put this up. Um, Steve-O um, from Jackass. Are, so on the latest episode of his podcast, Wild Ride, Steve-O said he turned down appearing on Bill Maher's podcast because the club random host refused to not smoke weed during their chat. Steve-O, whose real name is Stephen Glover, I didn't know his last name actually, asked um, conservative commentator Patrick Bet david who appeared on Club Random recently about his experience with Maher. Um, he says for me I'm clean and sober guy it's very important that I maintain my sobriety said Glover I'm about to be sweet 16 years sober coming up on it really there's nothing of value more than my sobriety there's nothing more that I protect than my recovery uh, I found it kind of upsetting when the Bill Maher podcast reached out and his thing is he smokes pot the whole time while he interviews people I said hey I'd happily go on there but why I'm on out of respect for my sobriety, could he refrain from smoking pot? He said, no, that's a deal breaker. Um, it's an interesting one because some people are going, well, that was they both disagreed and they didn't do it. But I'm just like, how hard is it not to smoke weed for a conversation? Um, and much respect for Steve-O. You know, that takes a lot of strength. Um, so, yeah. Um yeah, that was a story that I just saw just the other day. Um, yeah, he really is. Um, I um, yeah, Steve, I really, really interesting guy. Really interesting guy. Um, quite the change from young Steve. Yeah, well, this is the thing. People grow up, and I mean, he still does. I think he still does stunts and that, doesn't he? But um, it's interesting how. You know, people go through changes and grow up and stuff. And when I say grow up, I'm not saying that in a patronising way. Like, we all grow up. We all go through experience and learn. And um, I actually uh, found... I was about to DM a friend on Twitter. I'd not spoken in a long time. And on the Twitter DMs I'd seen, the last time we'd messaged was 10 years ago. Which was just remarkable to think about. 2014 was 10 years ago. And I'd sent him a video message that I'd recording on Daily Motion, and I went on it, and I was looking at this video message, going, "Oh my god, just like so, Im not embar like it's not embarrassing in the sense that like it was from a different time, but it's just like I was a different person then, you know. I would I would have conducted myself differently, and I would definitely look at how I am today in ten years from now, and probably cringe at this. Um, we all grow, we all grow." Um, Shapeshifter says ha, I enjoy my occasional joint too um, did I tell this story did I tell this story about chocolates last week when I was in the States nah Ben it wasn't 12 years when we last met 
Really? Was it that long? Well, we are going to have to change that when we finally get our schedules together, for sure. Um, my friend that I'm talking on the phone to just now, I've known her for 20 years. I know it's amazing I've known some people for 20 years and I've never met them in person. And it's like, and still they've been a part of my life. Like the internet's pretty remarkable that way. Um, cool. Well, the other thing for um, for Die Discovery this week, all I'm going to say is this is going to be really lame. But um, I've discovered how to use a dishwasher because I finally have a dishwasher. I remember when I was getting my drive... This is going to sound like such a weird tangent. When I was getting my driving lessons as a kid, I remember my driving instructor saying that he has one rule in the house and that is if the dishwasher breaks, we get a new one within 24 hours. Like, that is the rule. Because it's so necessary. And I thought, yeah, I couldn't live without a dishwasher. And I've been in this house for about 12 years. And I've never had a dishwasher. And I used it for the first time yesterday. And I was... I've used a dishwasher before, but but like 15 years ago. And I was a bit a bit intimidated by it because technology has come a long way. So I was going through the instructions. I've also got um was it is it um induction hob? So I used to have a regular gas hob in the house. But then you have to clean all the sort of the, the metal guards on it and stuff like that. Now I've got a flat induction cooker and when you turn the heat on the heat doesn't go on until there's a pot on it it senses it and I was like this is amazing because there was I think in the last few years there's been two times where I've left the gas on with the with the fire going by the way uh like for a long period of time it's kind of like when you have hair straighteners leaving the hair straighteners on on the floor oh um but the way that my home is set up now I have no gas running in the house now I have a utility room with the boiler, new boiler set up. My new boiler is amazing. I have this really great th um, thermometer. Wherever I have it in the house, it will detect. Um, and it controls the boiler. And it means my, my old boiler, I would have to either turn it on or off. There was no like middle ground. So it would either be fully going or not at all. Whereas now it's a lot more nuanced in its efforts. And it's really, really great. Imagine once we get Tesla robot helpers. Yeah, but the idea that there's going to be a robot that's like cleaning the plates like this, you know, like in the movies. I know you're not saying it, but I like that that's the idea people think of robots, that they'll be there with a with a cloth, a sponge, cleaning the dishes individually. It's just not, that's not how it's going to happen. Um, wow, Nick, that was a pretty low blow of a joke. I'm not reading it. People can read it in the chat. Uh yeah, once you have a dishwasher, you will never go back. Using it once. But there's, there's two things you've got to put in there. I mean, you put the salt in the dishwasher. You um, you then obviously put the dishwasher tablet. But then there's the um, the liquid you put in as well, like the... What do you put in a dishwasher? What's the extra thing? Um... It's the rinse aid. That was it. Rinse aid. I was completely unaware of rinse aid. Um, so yeah, I know. There we go. This is the future from the app. From the app. I've always been thinking though. I want a boiler that doesn't use gas, and it just doesn't seem to be catching on yet. But knowing my luck, and by the way, can I just say you're doing really well on the puzzle? But it looks gross, doesn't it? The way it's all mashed up like that. I mean, a protein molecule is never going to look nice, but um, yeah. There we go. There we go. Um, right. Before we get on with the main topic, you want to know about the, the store, right, people? Are we ready for this? So, um, the store. If you want it, you just go to... Actually, do you know what? Let me uh, bring it up on screen now. It's called it's called questforempathy.com. I had this link. And uh, questforempathy dot com and uh if you go on there you will see all the items and um i'm just having a look here here we go so um quest for empathy dot com oh that's zooming in that's not what i wanted to do i was trying to scroll down but that was obviously not going to work um let me uh and and here's some of the items we got 
Um, I mean, I should move out of the way here. Look, kind words, Tate. One kind word can change someone's entire day. But if you go on it, you'll be able to see it. Um, so, yeah. All the items are here. And uh, some of them, I think two of them. This one here, that's a real photo. Let me click on it. That was on my desk here. So you can see it. Obviously, that's the mock-up. But that's how it turned out. It looks great. But it's a massive mouse mat. I do need to create a smaller one. Um, but you got all the details here. Um, and then also for the buttons, if you the smaller ones I wish I'd got. But for the larger ones, there you go. There's the picture there as well. And as I said, there's the vitamin G uh, buttons. Um, but if you want a discount code... For a limited time only, and when I say limited time, it's there are 20 uses. So once 20 people have used this discount code, um, it won't be available anymore. There is going to be a 10% discount. So uh, if you want the discount, uh, this is the code that you are going to need, uh, which is QUEST LAUNCH, all capitals. Uh, I, I don't know, lowercase might work as well, but for 10% off your entire order, excluding shipping and the big badges are awesome I, I was i was curious about that i was curious about that and uh you, you like the mug um you like the mug well actually let, let me go back through these then um so uh let me go back here and let me bring up on screen the uh there we go so, uh, yeah, we've got some Vitamin G pin buttons. The Vitamin G pin button set features a charming collection of five pin buttons, each decorated with the colourful Vit G potion bottle emoji, symbolising the importance of gratitude in our daily lives. Perfect as a personal keepsake or a thoughtful gift to those you are grateful for. And they're available in two sizes. Uh, one, one and a quarter inch and two and a quarter inch. Um, so there we go. And they do have a glossy finish right there. There we go. There we go. Um, right. Up next. By the way, I love that every show we do, there's always someone who comes in at the beginning and gives a down rating. I just, I love it. I love it. I love that someone is that bothered to do it every time. You can't see it, but I can see it. And it always tickles me on the inside. Because I like the idea that someone is that annoyed that they'd waste their time each week doing it. Um, what is the biggest badge ever? What dimensions? Well, yeah, we're not going to beat that record. Shipping would cost a ton, right? Um, okay, this one I know a lot of people would like. Penguin's Revenge Ceramic Mug. Uh, introducing... Oh, let's do that. Introducing the Penguin's Revenge Ceramic Mug. Let me... Uh, take myself a bit smaller here and I'll put myself where should I put myself I'll put myself up here for the minute uh introducing the penguins uh, revenge ceramic mug a colorful homage to Miles's unexpected VR counter with a penguin this mug features a hilarious cartoon where the roles are reversed a penguin paddle and flipper gets its revenge on Miles perfect for anyone in on the joke or those who just appreciate a bit of light-hearted fun the Penguin's Revenge Ceramic Mug offers a daily dose of laughter and warmth. Um, they're wasting their own time. I know that. I just, I just, I just find it, I find it interesting because it's always just one, and I think I know who it is, which makes it even more funny. Um, don't bother. Hate is gonna hate. Hate is gonna hate. Um, imagine the shipping on a meter wide badge. I know it'd be absolutely incredible. And imagine wearing it. Um, so anyway, it doesn't have anything on the other side. And for anyone that wants to see it still, I feel like I am going to be showing all this, right? It's a nice mug. With orange. An orange inside. There we go. There we go. Um, okay. On to the next one. On to the next one. <laughs> You'd wear it, Mojo. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, okay. We've done this one. 
uh, already. Uh, creative Essence Matt, engage, inform, inspire. Unveil the full potential of your creativity with the Creative Essence Matt, a mouse mat designed for those who are fueled by connection, knowledge, and transformation. Featuring Miles Dyer's inspiring slogan, arguable, this mat stands as a daily beacon of motivation to make a meaningful impact. Whether you're editing video, crafting designs, writing content, or engaging in any form of digital artistry, the Creative Essence Mat provides the stable, inspiring foundation you need to produce your best work. Um, so there we go. Uh, we got this. The Kind Words Tote. Super cute. And it's organic. Uh, carry a message of hope and kindness wherever you go with our Kind Words Tote. Whether you're out for groceries, carrying your latest reads, or preparing for a day in the park, Make this your go-to companion for a life lived with intention and warmth. I do have it here. Dee, 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 dee. It's the wrong one. <laughs> I held it up and it wasn't. It was the propagation paradise. That is not the one you're going to get. I just saw it on the floor and it was upside down. And then as I held it, I was like, this is not the material. And then I held it up to the camera. And I was like, that is why. I mean, that's a very nice, very nice tote bag, but it's not the one that I'm, <laughs> I'm selling. Uh, why the yellow color within the scheme? Teal and white, I get. Uh, oh, you mean for the... Um... Oh, you mean for Engage, Inform, Inspire. Well, I needed three colors. Uh, when I think of engage, yellow is a warm colour that I'd associate with engagement. I'd associate yellow with light. Uh, and so that was the reason for the choice. Um, but not for everyone. Um, cool. Uh, right. Next one. We've got uh, the Miles Dyer Live official mug. Enhance your day with the Mars Die Live official mug. Perfect for coffee lovers, tea adorers, and channel supporters. Durable, sleek, and ready for your favourite beverage. I've been very proud of these descriptions. Um, <laughs> yeah, pro Propagation Dev's like, heck yeah, sending him that tote paid off. It certainly did. Um, <laughs> um, this mug, I have updated the design. I'm just gi gi giving this as, some, um, as a transparency. When I got the sample made, here it is. You'll notice it's a bit off because I made it a bit further round. It's a bit of an angle. So this new design, this will come a bit back a bit. So it's more, it'll be more centre when you look at it there. But anyway, that's the mug. Ta-da! Which leaves us with the final thing on the store. Uh, we got two. We got two shirts here, uh, black and white. Um, we'll just go to the white one. Here we go. And it says, showcase your commitment to understanding and connection with the Quest for Empathy T-shirt. A statement piece for those who value compassion and empathy. So there we go. The Quest for Empathy shirt. Um, I've not worn these yet. Um, I do need to for when I uh, get some photos with them, uh, which I should be taking tomorrow or Friday. It's been a very busy week as I've been settling into my new place. And look at all the sizes. you got uh, extra small, small, medium, large, extra large, double extra large, triple extra large, quadruple extra large. And the price does go up with sizes. Um Sixteen pounds thirteen, all the way up to extra large, and then it's these ones will then go up. Um, but yeah, and I think I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. So these these are what are on sale at the store at the moment. There are a few other items that I will be adding in the coming weeks. Um, I've mentioned some uh, shirts that I've got that I need to shift in my home uh, for stick aid and um, stick aid shirts. Although that I'm probably going to do just um shipping price or something like that um and what was the other one i've got oh quest for empathy shirts um so yeah 
Um, should have done a death metal font. I would have totally been in. <laughs> well, this is the thing now is everyone's going to have preferences. But, you know, this is in brand with me. So um, I am happy with these designs. A lot of these I worked on a year ago. Um, went through a lot of different designers. A lot of designs that I paid for and ended up not using. Um, and I definitely like this cleaner look, personally. Um, so, yeah, really, really happy with that. Obviously, the Miles Die Alive one I did myself. Um, so there we go. Uh, for anyone that is interested, head on over to questforempathy.com uh, and use the discount code QUESTLAUNCH uh, at checkout. Um, there is a maximum of 20 uses of that code, um, and it applies to your entire order. Um, it doesn't apply, I don't believe, to um, shipping, um, but you get 10% off uh that you have many stick age shirts as well dude i still have lanyard holders <laughs> from the last stick aid uh that i definitely need to, to to work out on so uh yeah i need to work on that um anyway all right anyway i can't wait and and by the way if any of you do buy anything from the store uh i believe it gives me the opportunity to record a thank you video message um so if anyone does purchase anything from the store today uh after the show i will go on the app and i will record um, a video message uh thanking you uh, personally so how about that i think that's something they offer um and then what else was i going to say about this um no other than just really appreciate the support i'm really glad to have this out there at last oh there we go clem fandango just placed an order just came up on my phone this is amazing i didn't even know i had the app set up so I could actually send you. Uh, oh, thank you, Clem. Really, really appreciate it. Um, send a thank you message. Would like to access the camera. Clem, do you want me to do it now? Here we go. Look, I'm, this is it. This is it. So I'm doing this live on the show right now. So I, th I think oh, I could just do audio or I could do video. Now, do I press it or do I have to hold it? Let's find out. Hey Clem, thank you so, so much, dude, for making the first order on my new store. Uh, as you know, we are live right now. Um, so um, yeah, uh, doing this DIY style. Um, but yeah, really appreciate the support, not just with this order, but with everything so far. So thank you. Okay. Right, I've just sent it. You just made one people's days. Right, there we go. I've just done it. I've just done it, Clem. Uh, when when the thing went full, I thought it was going to cut out, so that's why I quickly rushed at the end. It then started going round again, so I think the video message could have been longer. But there we go. Oh, and you left uh, you left a message as well. I'm just making sure I'm not showing any personal info when I'm holding it up, but. Thanks for all the awesome content. This is awesome. This is what I love about this store. Really, really cool. Uh, give it up for Clem. <laughs> I'm not going to say what you've ordered, by the way, um, but one of them did make me smile, so I look forward to seeing photos of that. Um, and yeah, I hope you're really, really happy with it. The other thing I would mention to people is I believe all of the products are made in factories, both in the US uh, and in the UK, um, and I think in some other regions as well. But the buttons are made in the US only. So if you're outside of North America, um, if you're outside of North America, um, they um, they will be, um, they'll, they'll have to be shipped uh, and it, it will cost a lot more. Um, Karina says, who sends out the merch? Uh, is it outsourced to them or you, how it works? Yeah, so how it works with a lot of merchandise places, like you get Shopify, that you would set up and then you can use things like print printify and printful or i can't remember all these names and the way a lot of them works is like you would use shopify to set up the store like it's for e-commerce and that is how you would do the distribution of like selling your shirts but then the printify or printful these are websites that that were organized that they, they basically outsource the printing um so it's it's, it's basically print on demand um and I don't know which ones do which, 
But fourth wall that I use seems to bring all the best qualities together. They have a really good store. They have a really good app that allows you to, um, um, you know, communicate with people and say thanks. But they basically will go to the factory. D different items are made in different factories. So when I'm looking through the different items, I can see what their background is, where they're produced, and all that sort of stuff. Um, and yeah, it's it's been really interesting. I've had, had some great conversations with the people there. Um, yeah, uh, right, all right, people, <laughs> you should start Mulsify. Uh, did I post a link to the merch store? Uh, I did, and it's also just here. It's, it's questforempathy.com. Uh, and a massive thank you to. Um, by the way, I don't want to be reading people's names because, like, Clem Fandango is Clem Fandango in the chat. Uh, but others I don't want to say just in case I'm giving away personal details. So um, let's have a look here. I'm having a look here. Yay, you got the video. You got the video. That's awesome, awesome. I want to do a follow-up uh, video now, Clem, but uh, there we go. You got it. You got a double video. You got you got it on on my phone, but then also you got a better quality video because it was me doing it here live. Um, so yeah, really really cool. Um, there we go. Ben knows. Ben knows indeed. Um, forgive my ignorance. Where do I enter the discount code? I believe you enter it when you're at checkout. So um, I'm just going through it now. Let's have a look. Just have a quick look here. So if I was to do this, add to cart, check out. Oh, you can't even see it here. Uh, leave a message, all this sort of stuff. Oh, here we go. Enter promo code. And you would type it there. And you would type quest launch. I'm not going to press enter because there are so only so many uses of it. And I want to make sure you have it. Um, so yeah, I'm giving you all like first dibs on it. Then after the show, I'm going to be sharing it on the Empathy Arcade Discord. Uh, and then in like a day or two, I'll then be tweeting it out um, for any remaining ones. Um, but yeah, um, I'm really excited. This has been a, a long time coming. I've, you, I've put so many hours agonizing over this because I just want to make it good. And that is why I ordered all the products because I wanted to make sure they were good quality uh, first. Um, so although I got a good discount on it, I did spend a good like 50, 60 pounds on shipping on, on all the different individual items and stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm all, I'm all about that and good. And, uh, thank you so much, Kira. Appreciate, appreciate that. Appreciate that. Um, and for my mods in particular, I am going to be organizing, uh, some shipments out to you of things that aren't on the store um, that I want to make sure that you get as a huge thank you. Um, so I'll be in touch with that. In in uh, That'd be comical if Miles had accidentally wasted a discount code. No, it wouldn't. It would have been very, very sad. Very, very sad. Right, guys, we've, we've only got 20 minutes of the show left and we haven't even got with the main topic, but this has been fun. This is always about hanging out. So um, I'll leave this down here. I wanted to talk about COVID, which is a horrible, horrible thing to talk about. But the reason I wanted to talk about it was a couple of reasons. One, I'm not going to go into too much detail, not because of me, but because of who it's about. But like, for example, I've spoken about my brother before because he shared a very personal story of frustration with the health service, which a lot of you gave really nice advice on um, on the Empathy Arcade Discord. Um, but my brother is currently undergoing treatment slash research for long COVID. He's had it for about a year and a half now. And he has really struggled with it. Like his energy levels are through the floor. And it's just been really sad to see. Um, and I also relate to it in some ways because of when I had my head injury recovery. I remember going to the doctor like a week or two after my head injury and was like, I feel out of it. I feel depressed. And the doctor was saying, post-concussion syndrome this is totally normal will last about two weeks maybe a month or two I was like a month or two what 
And in hindsight, looking back, I wish that had happened because, um, because um, it ended up taking years for my recovery. And so something I've said to my brother is you don't see the ending. And when you're going through recovery, you wonder how things were before and it can be incredibly frustrating. And so I have a huge amount of connection with what he's going through whilst also acknowledging I didn't have what he had and it doesn't take away from the stuff that he's going through. So, um, yeah, uh, much love to my brother at the moment. And so that's been going on and I really hope my brother um, gets some answers because I think that's something he wants more than anything. He wants answers. He, you know, when all the tests were being done, they were like, well, it could be leukemia. And my brother's like, I need this ruled out. And it's now looking very likely that it's going to be uh, long covid um, thank you, JPEG. Thank you in the chat. Um, I have seen a few orders come in, and I am going to be thanking you after the show with video messages. Um, I've just been really scared not to um, uh, read out any names that are, you know, not usernames and stuff like that. Um, so that's one thing. And then on the other hand, when I went to see my friend Amol in Alabama, September, October of last year. I was pretty unwell then and I was pretty sure it was allergies, which I didn't think I had. Upon my return, and keeping in mind I was always testing negative, my friend Amal said she tested positive for COVID. So I'm pretty sure I must have had COVID and I already had a flashback to getting a flight out there and being on an internal flight with loads of people just coughing their guts out without even covering their hands and things like this um so yeah the, i've been thinking a lot about travel and when i went to boston for pax east among tens of thousands of people i thought am i gonna get covid and i feel i've been in the clear i feel i've been very very lucky and so the fact i can go to an event as big as that you know, over a period of four or five days and traveling in an airport where there are so many people that go through it. That's a lot to deal with, right? But I had a good friend of mine come to my house four days ago. Actually, it was a bit maybe five, six days ago. It was one or two days after I, I moved into my home and they weren't feeling great. They stopped for, you know, maybe an hour, if that. Then they headed off and then they text me the next morning and said, hey, bad news. I've just tested positive for COVID. Sorry. And I was like, thank you for telling me. Feel better. And now I feel like I'm dealing with this ticking time bomb inside me, which is it takes a while for COVID to happen. The next day I was having a bit of a headache. And when you think about COVID, any slight symptom you have of anything, I don't know about you, but I'm always like, is this COVID? Is this COVID? And the reality is often... Maybe you just got another illness. Maybe you got this coming on and, and this. And sometimes thinking about an illness increases the chance that you feel those symptoms because a lot of it is in the mind as well. And I bring up those three examples because I think it gives three great instances of how COVID is still with us. There are people still dealing with long COVID. We go to large events with huge amounts of people and every time you do it, it just takes one person to have COVID for you to um, catch it. And although in many ways it's a lot milder than it used to be, it's still not very, very pleasant. And I don't know the science behind it, but even if you get a mild case of it, I assume there's still a chance that you can get long COVID, which I would obviously hate to get. And then thirdly, the fact that you can just have a friend come over and they don't know they've got it until you know afterwards and I might have missed the bullet there's been a few times where I've been with people that had it and they didn't test positive until after we'd met and it was fine um and so it just made me think about how everyone is doing in in the current day and look there are always going to be people that debate you know that talk about the covid hoax or want to have you know a debate about vaccines and stuff like that I have been vaccinated I had one or two boosters I haven't been boosted for like well over a year or maybe two years just because as a personal choice, I don't feel I need it because I've been getting COVID on a regular basis, which some of you might think is a bad idea. Maybe it is, maybe it's something I should consider. Um, this is not to have a debate about 
vaccines or or covid covid is legit um vaccinations have been very very helpful in the fight against it that's not to take away from the fact that there are a very small percentage of people that have adverse effects and for people that have had adverse effects i hope they're compensated um but this is more about the discussion of like how you're all doing and how it's changed your life because I find when I go to, I, I feel a lot more introverted now and things like this. I'm going to stop talking, but hopefully that gives you a lot to think about. Uh, I'm now just going to have a look in the chat and see how we're all doing. Um, uh, ben says, I've got some old photos of your brother wearing the rubber horse mask that might make him laugh. Please do send, Ben. Please do send. Um, is there a reason why it's so severe for him? Um, the The honest answer is I don't know. I don't know. And I do think it's kind of a bit of a lottery, uh, unfortunately, with that sort of stuff. Um, yeah. Um, I've been probably bitten by cat fleas recently, had an allergic reaction, still recovering. It's horrible. Ugh. Um, it's the thing. There's so much stuff out there in the world you can be dealing with. Um I have a feeling a false negative was a thing. I remember a bunch of news about those tests not being the most reliable. I mean, that definitely can be the case. That definitely can be the case. Um, false negatives but that, uh, and, and false positives, I guess, can happen as well. Um, I guess, look, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this as a poll in the chat. I'm really curious about this. Um, right, let me just do a poll. Um I've just put a test. You're going to ask what this means. I'm asking, do you have LFTs in your home? And what that is is a lateral flow test. You know, the test where you put the bud up your nose, you put it in a solution, you mix it around, and then you put it on a test, and it says where, you, where if you're positive or negative. I'm just wondering if any of you keep lateral flow tests in your home. In the UK, they used to be free for a long time. Now you have to pay for them. I always keep a pack in my home because if I'm ever going to a big event with other people and I'm feeling a bit under the weather I do like to make sure I'm covered but then I look back and think there are some times where I probably should have taken one and I didn't I don't do it every time because they're expensive I think it's like $15 for like six or something like that um yeah um Nick says, yeah, I don't even uh, know if I heard of any game cats getting sick from packs, which is insane. That is. I mean, I felt a bit run down, but that was just because it was a really busy week. Um, but I'm very, very surprised. Very, very surprised by that. Because there were, I saw a lot of people saying that they did get unwell when they were there. But a lot of them were out partying late. We, we were pretty sensible. Um, I'm just going to take this off screen, actually, while I'm looking. But um, if anyone wants the uh, merch code later, let me know. Um, let's have a look here. Um, Finn says, I thought I had a sore throat. Went in for antibiotics. They said it was COVID. They gave me a green pill. Then the sore throat went away. Told me I didn't need the vaccine anymore. They gave you a green pill. Never heard of that. Sore throat. I always mention this on the show. Green tea and honey. Oh my goodness. It's such a great comfort drink and it's really good for the throat. Highly, highly recommend. Um, I met an ex-colleague recently. She had long COVID and quickly got worn out when walking scary. Yeah, my brother gets out of breath pretty quickly. Um, when I had to take him to a hospital for a specialist in London. It was a long journey anyway. And he, you know, I went with him to take care of him. I was really proud of him because it's just not easy. It's just not easy. Um, it's very easy to forget cold and flu symptoms existed pre-COVID. We still get regular cold and flu. I know you used to get a cold every year or a flu. I kind of feel like that's probably happening, but also because we live a lot more isolated lives, I just feel like things have slowed down a lot more. Like when I go into towns at night, they seem a lot quieter, but it's not just because of COVID or post-pandemic changing attitudes. It's also because of the economy. The economies are just terrible at the moment, um, which can make a massive thing. Um, 
Thankfully, Touchwood, I've avoided it somehow. You've never had COVID. Done a bunch of gigs and stuff post COVID, no flu. So I've had, I've had COVID, definitely once, but I think I've had it twice, maybe three times, and I was pretty sure I had it because it first broke out in the UK. There were reports that it was in late 2019, and two days after, no, nah, it wasn't COVID because I went to the doctors and they gave me antibiotics for it, and I was with people that didn't get it as a result. But I got very, very unwell, and I wasn't sure about it. Uh, just starting this stream, only slightly sure says, but I'm grateful for your positivity. It's made a tough year more bearable. Much love to you. Um, I, you know, I do these shows just so that we have a chance to hang out, and uh, things can be tough. And I say that's okay. I don't mean it's okay for things to be tough. It'd be nice if they weren't, but it's okay to acknowledge that things are tough and uh, I hope things uh, get better for you. Uh, Salvador says, uh, talking with uh, the local in Boston, they said ever since COVID, a lot of the city still closes early. Well, this is it. It's created new attitudes. One of the things that I do welcome is the opportunity to work remotely and in hybrid. The idea that you get everyone going into London during the same hour in the morning and then leaving the same hour in you know at nights when people are coming home so you have all this infrastructure and you're pushing everyone through it at the same time so there's congestion on the roads and that and often I would get into work stressed before I even started work because the journey was so expensive and terrible um and I, I remember seeing I think it was probably I read it 10 years ago that the that the commute time the average commute time in the UK was like half an hour and in 10 years it hadn't gone down commuting is such a waste of time but i also do see the benefits of going into an office but that's why i think hybrid is the best um prophecy says never had covid before but the vaccine didn't work out too good for me heart inflammation has caused atrial fibrillation it's been a super rough week for me with this i'm so sorry to hear that and this is the thing is i find the discussion, I, I know I said this wasn't going to be a discussion about vaccines, but based on that, which is absolutely terrible, you know, I'm always someone that tries to have a fair perspective on stuff. And I find that when it came to the vaccine debate, it's very easy to be dragged into vaccines are good, so we have to defend it and not allow any negativity things to be highlighted, which I think is BS. And then you have people that have perhaps had bad stuff with vaccines and therefore say vaccines are terrible and they're a con um and you know they're um they're not tested and things like this when for me i have a very mixed feeling about vaccines which is they were sent out very quickly be because of the urgency of the pandemic they have been successful for the most part but there have been unfortunately a small fraction of the population just because by the nature when you have millions and billions of people taking vaccines there will be people that have um horrible um reactions to it and i hope that those people are taken care of um and i do kind of believe in um it being a personal choice um as well um but and also you can have a conversation about the pharmaceutical companies um i think that when it comes to making vaccines for pandemics, they should be made by health companies that are either nationalised or not allowed to make huge profit from it because then that also makes conflict of interest, right? Um, uh, Shen says the thing we need to agree on is um, oppose mandates. If you, uh, Have it if you want it, but nobody should be forced or coerced to. So coerce is the interesting one because I think in America there was no mandate, but... If you didn't have one, if you're a federal worker and you didn't have a vaccine, you would have to at least show a negative test, which, to be honest, I personally don't have an issue with because it's like, yeah, just show a negative test and then and then that's fine. Uh, but yeah, my, lots of love uh, coming in for prophecy. Um, re yeah, really, really terrible. And I know when I was reading about the stuff, I had the AstraZeneca one. And when you were hearing about blood clots, 
I was like, oh God. And then I start thinking about stuff, thinking, have I messed up my body and stuff? Like, it's amazing how like the stories and the information online gets to you. But then when I researched it, I realized uh, that the stats are that you're more likely to get a blood clot from taking birth control, which by the way, I don't take. Surprise, surprise. Um, and second, well, actually like that's, to be fair, you can now get male birth control, um, which I think the results were, but it makes you feel depressed. And it's like, and women are like, hello, yeah, we, we've known about this. Um, but also, um, you're more chance of getting blood clots flying. So it's like, yeah, there are risks, but it's about perspective. Um, so yeah, um, I'm, I'm definitely not for mandates, but I'm definitely for vaccination. Um, but it's ultimately people's choices. Um, uh, Oh, here we go. So I almost, a friend died three days after his second AstraZeneca stroke. He was 41. Now, obviously, I can't comment on that and can't even say if it's a correlation of it. Um, but yeah, these things have uh, have happened. Um, Karina says, I'm catching all sorts of colds these days. Must be because having been locked up for so much time in recent years, COVID only a small part of what worries me. Not good when you're immunosuppressed. Uh, yeah, that is the interesting thing as well because it's like when you're a kid playing with other kids getting your hands dirty getting ill that is something for building up your immune system right and i did worry um i did worry about that i did worry about that um yeah still super conscious of what i'm doing with my hands i'm naturally quite tactile uh, affectionate so that's been a, a big big change it's interesting how it changes behavior like that right um uh what is lft sorry i'm really behind on the thing so lft in the poll was uh lateral flow tests um uh ben says i've got loads of them from the cruise ship oh my god cruise ships are the worst aren't they for uh covid uh, spreading uh right yeah um mainly a home body anyway do you know what i want to find i want to find this uh meme that i had from from the pandemic let's see if i still got it on my phone right from the beginning i mean to be honest i've got one meme on here that is i can't show it <laughs> it's so bad it's so bad um do you know what i just search it on online uh because please yeah Yeah, it was this meme. <laughs> this was about during lockdown, normal people, gamers. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. I love it so much. Um, one of the biggest after effects from the pandemic is I have a hard time caring about sports anymore. I think I got out the habit. Yeah, that's interesting as well. Habit of that, yeah. Um, LFTs. I bought a packet the last time I had COVID and it did indicate that I was positive. Annoyingly, though, it seems you can miss the boat quite easily with LFTs and then you have no idea. Mm, that's the thing, yeah. I will never forget when the pandemic first hit how the tests were originally done. Do you know what? I'm going to find this. The original test where they used to go right up your nose. And it, and people go, yeah, yeah, you put it up your nose. I'm like, no, no, this is right up your nose. Uh, is this it? No, there's, there was one where it was like, honestly, so deep. They went up the nose so deep. It scared the shit out of me. This was it. I found it. 
Uh, what am I going to do? I am going to load it onto here. I was going to say, don't watch this if you're squeamish, but I, to be honest, I think anyone that watches this is going to be like, Ugh. Here we go. Uh, here we go. Check this out. And introduce the swab into the floor of the nose. Advance the swab along the floor, feeling for obstructions and twirling if obstructions are encountered. Depending on the size of the head, the back wall of the nasopharynx will be encountered when the red mark on the swab is between the tip of the nose and the nasal opening. Twirl the swab in the nasopharynx before removing it. Sorry. No... The ones you do at your home, you never do them like that, right? Because I started doing um, weekly research where they used to come to my house and t I'd do blood tests and stuff like that. And they would obviously ask what you've been doing, who you've been hanging out with, all this sort of stuff. And it was for Office of National Statistics. And I was I was happy to do that to help with the, the research. Um, and I was so scared when doing the test. I was like, it's not like that, is it? That is just horrific. Um yeah um right guys sorry i'm so behind on the chat i am nick says i'm just so grateful we got those vaccines as fast as we did and they worked as well as they did just amazing i mean it really was incredible the effort that was done um and as a result, like research on cancer and Alzheimer's has made major breakthroughs because obviously the whole world was just focusing its resources on trying to get to things as quick as they can. Um, and Shen Miaozo, we're, we're not going to be agreeing, mate. I'm sorry. Um, you say these jabs weren't vaccines by historical standards. Yes, in terms of like it was using new technology, but they were still vaccines. And they weren't tested long enough. And th this is the thing about people saying it wasn't tested long enough. How long did you want it tested for in a pandemic that was ravaging through society? And if you're going to say that COVID wasn't causing issues, and I'm not saying you are, I'm just saying that that's an argument I often hear. Um, yeah, some vaccines work and are good. These ones ain't it. Um, I beg to differ. I really beg to differ. Um I, th I don't know. I just feel like people have a lot of short-term memories in terms of how bad it was for people that contracted COVID and were on, like, breathing apparatus because it was just fucking up their lungs. Um, I had COVID, and it was pretty, pretty horrible. And I was vaccinated. And I do think what it would have done to my body if my body had no fucking idea what to do with these proteins. Um, but, yeah. As I said, I don't want to be having a debate about this. I want to be having a debate about where we are now. Uh, let's have a look here. Time to Play says, I'm just a factory worker on shit money. I think people like me get forgot. It's all about the office. Yeah, it's interesting you say that because uh, during the pandemic, I actually uh, worked as an emergency worker in a factory uh, helping build respiratory equipment for hospitals. Um, so yeah, during the pandemic, I was working at a factory and uh, it was um, it was very eye-opening. It was very eye-opening. I'm just having a look here. Uh, where are the documents? Uh, have I got a photo? I mean, it's on my, uh, it's on my Instagram. I don't know, it might not be. When was the pandemic? Actually, do you know what? It's the thing of it organizes your photos by date, but then often a lot of times when you download photos off your phone, it's not actually dated it properly anyway. Uh, so it probably, oh no, here it is. Uh, here's two photos. This was me outside. And uh, funny enough, those masks, those filters on the mask we were actually producing. Um, and then when I was actually in the factory, there was me. That was me working on respiratory equipment for hospitals. And it was amazing to see the quantities we were creating. And it really hit home, like the scale of the crisis and like the need in hospitals. 
for ventilators and things like that. Um, and there were some groups that were making the ventilators and like the the cameras that you'd put down people's throats to check their airwaves. Um, it was it was it was really eye opening. Um, and I think this was another thing that was pretty despicable about during the pandemic was you had these people that were like emergency workers working through stuff on the ground and then they're being called liars by people that were like you know saying there isn't there isn't a pandemic and it's not causing these issues and these people are like i have to fucking tell people every day loved ones that they you know their loved ones have died i i know people that worked in it and uh, it's just a tragic state of affairs with the world that we live in at the moment so much distrust in our institutions and I think when it comes to the medical field, obviously pharmaceutical companies, very questionable and nefarious, but when it comes to frontline stuff, fucking heroes, man. Uh, heroes, heroes, heroes. Uh, right. Um, you do also get a huge dose of radiation while flying. Uh, well, I, I did hear that. Um, uh, right um, do you think they will try and force I love that we keep saying we're not going to talk about vaccines anymore and this is, I knew, I, this, is, this is the risk I knew we were talking about COVID I wanted to talk about like how people are doing these days and you get people always wanting to bring it back to vaccines which look I'm fine to touch upon do you think they will try and force vaccine mandates so I guess you're saying, I'm glad you said, do they try? Because they did. The, the thing was, in the UK, vaccine mandates were not forced. And I don't believe they were forced in the US. Um, but will they try and force it again? I think there's always a risk. But it's like the thing with any government pressure, whether it's surveillance or anything like that, you've got to keep governments in, uh, in check. The interesting thing about the AstraZeneca vo uh, vaccine was it was actually non-profit it was a it was like a non-profit it was like one of the one of the only vaccines produced that was not for profit i could be mistaken there it was by oxford wasn't it it was an oxford institute um uh Ben says, I remember traveling while different countries had different entry requirements. I had to have three different COVID passports and I got offered and given a vaccine at Singapore Airport. Wow. Um, the cruise ship. I saw a picture of one of those when I was on the bus one day on my way to the Mint. I remember when the first people came to the UK with COVID and there was a bus driver like at the front and then there were people in like had shoots and that um yeah uh see i'm now reading the comments about the meme are we re am i really this far behind uh oh yeah everyone's everyone's talking about the test now oh those tests were horrible i had the original test done yeah ops right i'm, I'm just i'm just scrolling all the way down uh so yeah the reason I, I was like let's stop talking about uh vaccines and we are is just because i'm so far behind on the chat the scroller looks like it's actually quite near the bottom but it isn't so um uh right <laughs> insert the tip until it comes out the ear uh Right. Sorry, guys. It's just me trying to read everything. That thing with the nose is what you'd expect to see in a sci-fi horror film where the alien experiment and they're abducted humans. Yeah, it scared the sh generally scared the shit out of me. Like, that test... This sounds really selfish. When COVID was first about, that test was the thing that made me went, fuck, I really don't want it. <laughs> like, I, I remember when I had to go to a hospital because I, I tested, I, I thought I might have it. And I went to the clinic and uh they did um they did a heat scan and I was fine and so they um they took my temperature and they were like you're fine and I remember I was going there scared going I don't want one of them I don't want one of them um uh, 
<laughs> I had to step away here for 15 minutes. I keep getting a pop asking if I have an LFT in my home. What is LFT? We're talking about lateral flow tests. Uh, oh, God. When doing, uh, doing the tests up the nose makes me want to sneeze loads. Um, on a positive note, one big thing I think it helped with is making us more aware of personal hygiene. Okay. This is something, okay? This is something that COVID made me think about loads. When you used to see all those diagrams of like how, like making you aware of like how much breath spreads around, like the importance of ventilation and stuff like that. It has made me do a complete 180 on how I feel about birthday cakes and blowing out candles. You should not give a shit about it. Now, after seeing all those diagrams, the idea of someone just like emptying their lungs over a cake and then everyone eats it, I think is fucking sick. It's absolutely disgusting. And that is a great example of where it's changed and made me probably, look, we've done it for years. It's been absolutely fine. But a part of me is like, yeah, you get someone <sighs> over a cake and then everyone fucking eats it. Um, yeah. So... Um, Let's have a look here. Let's have a look. Jesus, Kira, I do remember seeing that on the news. Um, yeah, it it's 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 kind of remarkable. I when when the pandemic was first like in Italy and it was coming to the UK, I was on a stag do in Yorkshire with my closest friends and we were we were staying at a farmhouse in the middle of nowhere and it genuinely felt like something's coming this sounds this it sounds like it's going to be bad and it felt like it could be the start of a zombie movie we were in the middle of nowhere and it was like have we got wood to barricade the doors um and i think that happened in like end of february early march Kelly says the first pandemic lockdown started 23rd of March. So I think it was in February, yeah. Um, and that's great. And I do think I do think um, all the volunteering that people did, if they could, was great. Even just making yourself aware in your street, like if there was an elderly people that needed food and you could go, go and do the shopping for them, I think it definitely added a, a greater sense of community in some ways. Um, but yeah, I was sent to hospital in a taxi because there were no ambulances. Absolutely remarkable. Absolutely remarkable. Um, yeah, the clap for workers. So in the UK, every, I can't remember, it was a certain day of the week, every Tuesday, we'd come out and we'd clap on the doorstep. And it was great to certain because you're clapping for the workers that are still out there. But then like, they don't get a pay rise. And so when the government, our government asked for a pay rise, the meme going round now is no, they shouldn't get a pay rise. They should get a clap every week instead. Um, yeah, that is true. Uh, NH staff did uh, have to get uh, vaccines, um, which, to be honest, um, my, my my grandmother when she had Alzheimer's was in a care home, and this is just a personal thing. Um, if my grandmother is vulnerable in a care home, I would want the staff there to be vaccinated um that's that's a personal opinion uh miles is miles behind i know i know um right yeah there have been some indirect uh indirect mandates um also, there's a lot of talk about, like, in the military, the amount of vaccines you have to take before you go in the military. Um, but again, some people, d you know, dispute whether or not uh, those vaccines have been longer tested and stuff. Um, Karina says, I remember coming into the office when it first got closed because of a few cases. I didn't read an early morning all staff memo about it. Thought someone is being tricksy with me. Uh, um If the pandemic hadn't happened, I probably still wouldn't be able to work from home. Now I do twice a week. It is amazing how much it's changed that, right? Uh, 
Makai, I, I appreciate that. But honestly, it just, it was for my own benefit as well, though, because I was in a factory with like head chefs, teachers, business owners, people from all walks of life. And it was just nice to do something. And it was very eye opening, but doing the same thing every three seconds, eight hours a day was pretty full on. Got very sore hands. And he didn't get any XP or platinum trophies for it, which was very, very sad. Um, Prophecy. Absolutely. The pandemic has changed so much. Gaming, for example. Yes. The amount of people I knew who'd never bought a games console before. I think it was something like a third to a half of all PlayStation 5s at launch were bought by people that never owned a PlayStation before really really good point it definitely got a lot of people to adopt gaming and on the flip side it has meant that there's been this sort of bubble burst we're seeing a lot of layoffs at the moment obviously it's due it's due to a contracting economy but it's also because we're outside of a pandemic now there are people that are oh, do you know the sad thing during the pandemic it was people that bought pets because they were stuck in all the time and then they gave them up afterwards because they couldn't keep 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 them afterwards um so yeah, really, really sad. Um, let's have a look here. And yeah, it, it, the 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 unknown of it, the unknown, and also the sheer incompetence of our leaders. I mean, Boris Johnson was going into a hospital saying, "Oh, I met all sorts of COVID patients. I was shaking hands with them and everything." You're like, you're a fucking idiot, man. You're an absolute idiot. Um. And, and and no need to apologise, man. Um, definitely, live chat isn't the best for like deep conversations. But also, I I I, I do see a lot of. Um, it's what I said about the nuanced stuff. Is there have definitely been issues flagged with the vaccines, but then people that are either in the camp of ignoring it completely and saying vaccines are hundred percent effective and all the stuff and it will cure COVID and that totally disregard that. But then I don't think most people think that. And on the flip side, the people that say, you know, it's not a real vaccine, uh, it's it's dangerous, it hasn't helped with anything with COVID, I think that's on the, the other extreme. I think there's a much more interesting, nuanced conversation, which is kind of why I didn't want the conversations to become about that. But I was happy to touch upon it, uh, the little amount that I did. Um, right. Oh, God. Six feet apart. I don't actually remember the first commercial. It was that kind of thing of like, oh yeah, wasn't it like trying to guilt trip you into stuff? Um, yeah, and and also it it fueled a lot of conspiracies because it's like if the governments, it was the whole thing of like, oh if they're partying, then clearly it's a lie. Um, the dancing nurses and doctors videos were great. It was interesting how much that wound people up. And I remember online, lots of people sharing all these TikToks of doctors going, see, this is why it's fake. If it was really a pandemic, why are they dancing? It's like, firstly, hospitals are compartmentalized. I went to hospitals that were completely empty because all the resources had been allocated to the COVID wards. And secondly, even doctors and nurses that are dealing with pandemics deserve a right to rest and relax and enjoy themselves to maintain morale but obviously some people can't see that um right um let's have a look but why miles the vaccine doesn't stop the spread well it stopped the volatility of it it stopped how badly it impacted people and therefore it did actually stop the amount that it could spread it slowed down the spread it didn't eliminate it um so again we're talking about extremes again people that think oh it didn't stop the spread so therefore it was useless i don't agree with that it reduced it it was effective in that sense um but anyway i'm not here as an expert and this is what i also find interesting is i you know there's a reason we have society built with people that are expertise in different fields and uh, I look towards my GP and I go with what they say. Um, when I have an illness, I go to my GP and I, I, I adhere to their expertise. Um, and that's how that's how I work. Um, 
Dude, you're using buzzwords. Experimental gene therapy is unbelievable, man. This uh, this is when I I, I, I the, these this is when you you really undermine your arguments. Experimental gene therapy, um, and yeah, I'm you know me, and and actually, uh, not not saying it's related, but it's something. Whether it was like Brexit or other divisive issues, Trump back in the day, even people that were at different ends of me in discussion still liked engaging because they realized I wasn't misrepresenting people I'm willing to have legit arguments um and I'm always I'm always happy to do that um right right I'm just I'm I'm scrolling all the way down uh okay right I'm just scrolling down sorry guys um uh okay right let me let me end this uh let me end this poll that has been going oh wow it's split man interesting 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 so the result was do you have an lft in your home lateral flow test they might be called stuff elsewhere 57 percent said no and 42 percent said yes i thought it was going to be much more in favor of no i thought most people weren't so the fact that you know 42 percent do that surprises me. I would be in the yes for that as well. So, uh, yeah, thanks to people that voted in on that. Uh, so, um, all right, people. Uh, that will wrap it up. Before I go, I will just put onto screen. Uh, I love it that I've got all these things now on my screen like this. <laughs> the merch launch just here questforempathy.com discount code quest launch for 10 percent off your order um i will make this available on discord uh after the show uh and then i will be sharing it on twitter and the wider audience uh in the coming days so i want to say a massive thank you to everyone for tuning in uh do hit the like button uh before uh leaving and if you haven't subscribed and uh, are new to this welcome topics aren't always as uh, serious and and uh i'm just, just gonna say morbid i don't think morbid has been i mean it's been an interesting discussion it was more of a check-in um but we talk about all sorts and uh, as i've mentioned in the past i've been having a lot of conversations with potential guests coming on the show and i've got so many excellent guests coming up and if you didn't see the episode a couple of weeks ago uh with dan who uh, was on, who um, has a artificial arm. It was such a good episode. Have I got the thumbnail here? This was it. Uh, do check it out. It was a really good episode, um, really good conversation, uh, really interesting guy. Do, do check it out. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. Please do take care of yourselves. And uh, if you have any thoughts after this, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I'm sure there are going to be some interesting vo voices uh, after this conversation here. Um, but yeah, much love to you all. And thank you to everyone who has bought stuff on the store so far. Once this ends, I'm going to be uh, recording video messages, giving my thanks. So without further ado, thank you. Take good care of yourselves. Love, respect, empathy, and adios. Till next time. Bye-bye. And I'm doing another Let's Play tomorrow, so stay tuned for that. I'm doing Let's Plays every day at the moment. It's all good.
Thank you, everyone. Honestly, um, I'm glad I let this run a bit longer because I felt really bad as we were getting to quarter to the hour and we'd only just started doing going through the topic. But it was a big topic. We had a good conversation. And, uh, you know, this is the thing about the new age of media. You're not confined to a specific time slot. You just... If it's a short show, it's a short show. If it's a longer show, it's a longer show. Uh, and I am just very, very grateful that I get to spend this time every week with you. So massive thank you. And some more orders have just come in. So thank you to all these people. Um, let's have a look now. How many orders? One, two, three, four, five, five, five orders so far. Wow. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, oh, one of the orders was cancelled and re-put in because you didn't include the uh, discount code, which is totally understandable. So, uh, yeah, uh, four orders so far. Um, thank you. Do hit the like button and do check it out there. Um, and, yeah, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Catch you next time. Bye-bye.